we're going to continue to monitor that well uh, until we are, as we'll call it, in the green. This is a long-term plan for this space and this community. We have new in-depth information tonight on the ongoing water crisis in Airway Heights. Thank you for joining us, everyone. I'm Jane McCarthy and I'm Mark Handerhan. The Air Force now says it'll cover the cost of clean drinking water up to $700,000 for the city of Airway Heights. It has now been six months since widespread contamination first came to light and the groundwater in that area is still unsafe to drink even today. As two on your side investigator Whitney Ward learned, the Air Force may have known about the problem years ago. So she went to Fairchild's commander to get answers. She joins us now with this special investigation. Whitney? Good evening. So right after that problem surfaced, Airway Heights had to buy clean water from the city of Spokane because that main aquifer is now contaminated. But that is incredibly expensive. So just today, the Air Force said it will cover that cost, but the groundwater is still unsafe. And the more I looked into it, the more I found that shows the military knew about the potential dangers well before this year. <laughs> trying to make sure that the water is safe. One case per two people per household. I am a little frustrated with the Air Force Base. We're starting to wonder what we got ourselves into. I, I don't know what's going on, you know, who's gonna pay for the flush of the water. It's sad to say, but I really don't trust it. Justin and Taylor Deal never used to think twice about drinking the tap water in their Airway Heights home. Until... An alert for people living and working in Airway Heights tonight. Well, Airway Heights announced their water could be unsafe to drink. And we'll let you know when the water is safe to drink again. So we immediately cut off all water in our household. I didn't shower in it. Our dogs didn't get it. I didn't drink it. The water they trusted for the last four and a half years was no longer safe widespread contamination believed to be coming from Fairchild Air Force Base. The problem, a little known chemical called PFOS PFOA, two different but similar compounds used in firefighting foam, a special fire suppressant made to work on jet fuel. Any sort of chemical goes into the ground, it's gonna go into our water. It's been used at hundreds of military bases across the country for decades, dating back at Fairchild to the 1970s. It's scary. And even more scary because Taylor is drinking for two. She found out she was pregnant and they say drink tons of water. How much do you worry about the four and a half years that you lived here drinking that water all the time, not knowing? It's terrifying for me. I mean, I was early on in my pregnancy, so it was really scary for me um, just because that's such a crucial time for organ development. The health risks from long-term exposure to PFOS PFOA are significant. Low birth weight and developmental delays in children, in adults, high blood pressure, thyroid and immune system deficiencies, even kidney and testicular cancer. Yes, it's, it's scary for me because what's going to happen down the line for me later on, but for now, a newborn child that I'm bringing into the world, I just put her in risk's way. Fairchild officials tell me they began testing for PFOS PFOA about six months ago. The EPA had just issued its official drinking water health advisory, limiting concentrations of the chemical at 70 parts per trillion. That then sparked the Air Force to start testing the groundwater around each of its bases. Testing at Fairchild began just this last April. And by May, the results were in. Some wells bordering the base contained at least 15 times more contamination than the EPA considered safe. It's believed that contamination started here at this old former fire training site on Fairchild. This is what's called the old burn pit. It's no longer being used and it hasn't been used for years, but now there are still a lot of questions about the contamination and what happens next. So to get answers, I came straight to the top. I think most of it is, is the, the unknown right now. You make our Air Force proud. Colonel Ryan Samuelson has been the Fairchild base commander since July of 2016. We have volunteers from outside of the city. For the last six months, he says one of his top priorities has been reassuring the Airway Heights community. The Air Force is going to be in this. We're going to stick with these residents until we determine exactly what contamination, if any, from our activities uh, occurred uh, and how we're going to mitigate that. He tells me the Air Force acted quickly once the contamination was confirmed. When did the Air Force know about the problems that were the result of this firefighting foam? In May of 2016, when the EPA established 70 parts per trillion, uh, that really established the threshold in the process by which we would move forward 
uh, to investigate sources. Uh, and so we tested our own internal wells uh, and those areas down by our firefighting were high. He's talking about that old burn pit where Fairchild conducted regular training exercises with the firefighting foam known in the military as AFFF. So we used to go out here uh, and set fire to some things to allow our firefighters to train and to practice and they would use that actual foam. That training ground sits just over the Grand Ronde Basalt, a massive but shallow aquifer just 200 feet below the surface. It's now believed the repeated exposure from AFFF has been leaching dangerous chemicals into the groundwater for decades. Do you feel like the Air Force did enough soon enough for all these innocent people? I think the Air Force has done a pretty good job of identifying this is a risk. If you think about it, May of 16 established the 70 parts per trillion, uh, and in less than a year we moved out with how we were going to mitigate. But actually, the side effects of PFOS PFOA are nothing new. In the year 2000, mega conglomerate 3M agreed to voluntarily phase out the chemical from its products after the EPA said it was likely carcinogenic, with a strong tendency to accumulate and pose a risk to human health and the environment. At the same time, the company made AFFF for the entire U.S. military, but also used those chemicals in Teflon and Scotchgard. Their agreement was to reduce the chemical content by 2010 and eliminate it by 2015. The military used the foam up until the very end. I also found internal records from the Department of Defense showing high-ranking officials knew about the adverse health effects of AFFF as early as 2001. Then Assistant Deputy Undersecretary of Defense Curtis Bowling issued this memo to multiple agencies saying the EPA found PFOS chemicals to be persistent, bioaccumulating, and toxic. He called for a meeting to discuss high-risk uses of PFOS and ideas on what should be done to reduce or eliminate its release into the environment. But again, the military continued to use the foam until it was no longer available. And in the last several years, PFOS PFOA contamination has been identified at dozens of military bases across the U.S., impacting millions of people. And so what about problems that the Air Force had heard about in other locations? We know that the, this, you know, these same chemicals were causing problems in groundwater up in Alaska, for example, before 2016. So why still use the foam? Uh, the foam, uh, the foam was began being pulled out of the firefighting equipment uh, about two years ago. And of course, with aviation firefighting foam, it's very particular. So you had to have another source because it smothers fires with jet fuel very, very uh, quickly and rapidly. Uh, and so until those uh, that replacement foam uh, could come online, uh, many areas continued to use it. For people who live here and have lived here for many years, who are saying. We've been drinking this water now for decades. It's too late now because they've already had the contamination. So what do you say to those families? Well, I really, I, I'm not a health expert, I'll be honest with you. I know the Air Force, we look to the Center for Disease Control. We look to the EPA to establish those. We've encouraged folks to visit our website. It's got a number of links on there uh, with very specific health related questions that experts in that category uh, can answer. Commander Samuelson tells me Fairchild, like most other bases, didn't quit using AFFF until 2015 when the EPA declared 70 parts per trillion as the safe limit for drinking water. Uh, if the Air Force knew that it was causing problems at certain bases around the country, why wait for the EPA before making some changes? Why not make the changes and stop using the foam earlier? Well, I think there's two parts. One, uh, I think it would be very tough to find an exact date that said, all right, no longer use this. I do know that one of the things that, uh, that maybe ha that took a little bit longer was, what is the alternative? Uh, you can't use water, you can't use your standard firefighting foam on aviation accidents. It would be uh, too detrimental to the public if an aircraft were to go down. If your family had lived here for decades, would you be satisfied with these answers? i tell you, if my family had lived here, uh, I, I would be asking the same questions that you're asking me right now. Commander Samuelson tells me he's never shied away from tough questions or criticism from the Airway Heights community. Our goal from the onset of this. In fact, he was often the one answering questions at Airway Heights public meetings at the height of the city's water crisis. You yourself out there answering questions. Why was that important to you? It's important to me because this base wouldn't be here without this community. 75 years ago, this community put this base here, and I think it's important. I'm not going to turn this over to a bureaucratic organization. I'm not going to give you a Washington, D.C. number to call. 
Uh, I believe I represent the base here, and I think these community members have the right to know. I don't have all the answers, but we'll take any questions at our public affairs number. Uh, what are those kind of things that I can take back to the bigger Air Force as we move through this process? Because I think we need to solve this as fast as we can uh, in a way that is very transparent with the community. But transparency is exactly what families like the deal say has been missing from the very beginning. It's not his fault, but it's his responsibility. He is the base commander. Do you question who knew what and when they knew it? All the time. I think that they have known about it a lot longer than they are putting out. Uh, but they just didn't put the time or effort into actually testing just how bad it was. But the deals tell me they're not sticking around to see what the base offers up as a solution. An apology goes only so far as my health. What about your investment, your home? Do you want to stay here? No, we're leaving. You are? I don't know, we'll just, we'll leave Airway Heights. Where will you go? Probably up north. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the, I, I like the community up there. I know that the water is safe. So this is the nursery. Because with a baby on the way, the deals can't help but wonder if the water near the base can ever truly be safe. And they agree it's just not worth the risk. So the thing at this point is it's not over yet, not mm -hmm. even close. So right now, Fairchild's still widening their search grid mm -hmm. to even know and understand how far this contamination really has spread. Mm -hmm. Do we have a sense of how big this is so far? Um, yeah, kind of. We have learned that there are at least almost 60 private wells in addition to the wells that are affected by the city of Airway Heights. Um, so it is, it is pretty widespread. And at this point, the commander told me the base is working with each individual property owner on what the long-term solution is because it's going to be different depending on the needs of each individual Absolutely. property. So it's a big deal. All right, so now what? What do we do now? Yeah, it's a <laughs> really important question that everyone mm -hmm. is talking about. So today they did announce that there is enough evidence that this contamination likely is from the base. Mm -hmm. So that's a big piece of the puzzle. Now the goal is to figure out kind of a long-term solution for Airway Heights public water. That may include some kind of filtration or even pulling uh, from a completely different source of water entirely. Mm -hmm. Those answers we just don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Wow, we're going to have to stay on top of it, exactly. of course, because it is such a big deal. Very big deal for so many stuff. families. Yeah. And